Warning, viewer discretion is advised. You are going to see the evidence that President Obama knowingly and consciously orders the murder of men, women, and children. Signs death orders where entire weddings or village gatherings are bombed by drones and other aircraft knowing that children would be killed and simply calling them collateral damage dehumanizing them down to the word collateral damage. Think of the magnitude of that. We're going to show you the mainstream news articles where they admit he signs death orders to kill people in cars with their children. Even in the fictional Scarface, Tony Montana won't blow up the car when there's little kids in the back of it. You got to be really evil to do this. And we've just gotten to where it's passe, it's no big deal. And he has massively increased the drone strikes, even since the warmonger George W. Bush. And it is sickening and disgusting that Democrats, because he was given a peace prize, why not give Hitler one or Stalin? Because he's trendy, he's liberal, he's supposedly black. It's cool when he kills people and destroys Libya and now uses Al Qaeda against Syria. It's so sick. And then you have that as a backdrop while he gets up there and fake cries and says, we've got to ban guns. And he's assigned a new task force that outside of Congress is going to call to, to ban guns. And Reuters says, be a dictator, Obama. They came out today. Use executive orders and take people semi-autos. They don't need that for hunting. It's not for hunting. It's to protect ourselves from tyranny. And it's just so over the top because with Bush, it was bad enough, but he was just a warmonger. With Obama, you get to hear about how he's like Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King rolled into one. And, and he's this man of peace. And it's so loving what he's doing. And it's sick. So we're going to show you just some in just a few countries of the documented dead children where the Pentagon admits they killed them and the death orders that President Obama has signed. And part of the Twitter feed we're going to use uh, is off of a researcher, Josh Begley, uh, who went and tweeted out, took him days to do it, all of the lethal drone strikes on children that have happened in the last few years. And it is just incredible. And it is hypocrisy on steroids. I would also add that YouTube, we're going to first air this on InfoWars Nightly News, YouTube will allow images of dead children when it's in mainstream news. The, back in the 60s, they allowed the image of burning children hit with napalm on via CBS, and that helped in the war. Now we're not allowed to see the flag draped coffins. Now, unless it's mainstream news, we can't show you the images of these dead children. So make no mistake, it will be flagged, it will be blocked, it will be banned. So you be sure and get this video when you see it and post it on every channel out there because it starts with Obama giving a speech about loving children. It's totally hollow and hypocritical. And then it moves through just some of the children he has directly ordered be killed. And then it just shows some simple mainstream news article photos. But again, because of the context we're putting it in, his hypocrisy, the censors will try to block you seeing something that ended the Vietnam War and could end all of these undeclared illegal wars. We're trying to save children here. Not just the children killed at Sandy Hook, the 20, but the thousands killed by these illegal wars. And so everyone who really cares about children and just doesn't want to buy into the hype in the name of banning guns needs to get this video out to everyone they know. This is a very important piece put together by Rob Dew. The system does not want you to see it, so save it, burn it on disc, show it on local access television, and get it out on every video channel on the web and when YouTube censors, like they've done in the past, we will simply use their attack on free speech and the truth as a way to get it out to even more people. We use the enemy's actions against them. So here is the report. We gather here in memory of 20 beautiful children and six remarkable adults. They lost their lives in a school that could have been any school in a quiet town full of good and decent people that could be any town in America. Here in Newtown, I come to offer the love and prayers of a nation. I can only hope 
it helps for you to know that you're not alone in your grief. That our world too has been torn apart. That all across this land of ours, we have wept with you. We pulled our children tight. And you must know that whatever measure of comfort we can provide, we will provide. As a community, you've inspired us, Newtown. In the face of indescribable violence, in the face of unconscionable evil, you've looked out for each other. And you've cared for one another. And you've loved one another. This is how Newtown will be remembered. And with time and God's grace, that love will see you through. But we as a nation, we are left with some hard questions. And we learned that our most important job is to give them what they need to become self-reliant and capable and resilient, ready to face the world without fear. And we know we can't do this by ourselves. It comes as a shock at a certain point where you realize no matter how much you love these kids, you can't do it by yourself. That this job of keeping our children safe and teaching them well is something we can only do together with the help of friends and neighbors, the help of a community, and the help of a nation. And in that way, we come to realize that we bear responsibility for every child because we're counting on everybody else to help look after ours. That we're all parents. That they're all our children. This is our first task, caring for our children. It's our first job. If we don't get that right, we don't get anything right. That's how, as a society, we will be judged. And by that measure, can we truly say, as a nation, that we're meeting our obligations? Can we honestly say that we're doing enough to keep our children, all of them, safe from harm? Can we claim, as a nation, that we're all together there, letting them know that they're loved and teaching them to love in return? Can we say that we're truly doing enough to give all the children of this country the chance they deserve to live out their lives in happiness and with purpose? been reflecting on this the last few days. And if we're honest with ourselves, the answer is no. We're not doing enough. And we will have to change. Since I've been president, this is the fourth time we have come together to comfort a grieving community torn apart by mass shootings. Fourth time we've hugged survivors. The fourth time, we've consoled the families of victims. And in between, there have been an endless series of deadly shootings across the country, almost daily reports of victims, many of them children, in small towns and big cities all across America. Victims whose, much of the time, their only fault was being in the wrong place at the wrong time. We can't tolerate this anymore. These tragedies must end. 
and to end them, we must change. If there's even one step we can take to save another child, then surely we have an obligation to try. In the coming weeks, I'll use whatever power this office holds to engage my fellow citizens, from law enforcement to mental health professionals to parents and educators, in an effort aimed at preventing more tragedies like this. Because what choice do we have? We can't accept events like this as routine. Are we really prepared to say that we're powerless in the face of such carnage? That the politics are too hard? Are we prepared to say that such violence visited on our children year after year after year is somehow the price of our freedom? There's only one thing we can be sure of, and that is the love that we have for our children, for our families, for each other. The warmth of a small child's embrace, that is true. The memories we have of them, the joy that they bring, the wonder we see through their eyes, that fierce and boundless love we feel for them, a love that takes us out of ourselves and binds us to something larger. We know that's what matters. We know we're always doing right when we're taking care of them, when we're teaching them well, when we're showing acts of kindness. We don't go wrong when we do that. That's what we can be sure of. Charlotte, Daniel, Olivia, Josephine, Anna, Dylan, Madeline, Catherine, Chase, Jesse, James, Grace, Emily, Jack, Noah, Caroline, Jessica, Benjamin, Evliel, Allison. God has called them all home. For those of us who remain, let us find the strength to carry on and make our country worthy of their memory.